Welcome back to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. Today, we're going to be looking at this BMW 1600 O2 series. Welcome back, and yes, today's brochure, the BMW 1600. Now, the 1600 was unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in 1966, to some praise. It was kind of like your entry-level car in the BMW range, um, and it was a two-door vehicle, which is why it was called the O2 series. Today's brochure is uh, from 1970 for the 71 model year, and if you think about these O2 series, really, there was the predecessor of what we refer to as the 3 Series today. While we're talking, let's talk about the channel a little bit. Please do consider subscribing if you're into car brochures. Uh, it certainly helps grow the channel and gives you better content. But more importantly, it gives you a chance to see the cars that you want to see and how they were presented in brochure form. But anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at today's brochure. So here it is, uh, the BMW 1600 or what's referred to as the O2 series. The O2 series, you won't see it mentioned O2 anywhere. But basically what happened, these were the BMW 1600 O2 is how they were initially um, referred to. Later on, these became the 1602. Um, after this brochure um, but we're probably more familiar with the car that came uh, later a couple of years later than this came out so this was 66 a couple of years later the BMW 2000 with the larger engine later became the 2002 which is a vehicle more people are familiar with but like I said this is the entry level car here on Quartzlight we like entry level cars so I think this is more fitting to be on the program than the 2000 particularly like these early ones with this lovely grill on there um, I do like the very simplistic design of early BMWs and really this was a time when the cars were really really well made um, and for a car from 66 they were a quite a good cruise car so they really meant something BMW at this time I kind of think modern bmws they've kind of like lost something in that sort of like reliability well built something's been lost somewhere and i think people just buy them just for the badge uh, nowadays but anyway maybe that's a bit controversial but um yeah i certainly prefer these older simpler bmws the brochure itself is an oversized brochure it's a larger size than an a4 what unfortunately happens with these oversized brochures is they do tend to suffer damage more because they're harder to keep basically but anyway we'll open the brochure up and yeah you can see that sort of wear and tear on the brochure itself love this picture because it shows that lovely round tail light i particularly like the tail lights on these early ones later on in europe they they came more of a um a rectangular shaped and I always remember going to look at one of these for sale. It was probably late 80s, probably early 90s. Um, I went to look for one of these for sale. It had the red tail lights, and the seller was just trying to sell it purely on these tails. Oh, it's the more desirable model because it's got these round tail lights on it. Incidentally, I didn't buy the car, it was in horrendous condition. But there you go. That's really my only experience with these cars lovely little um hubcaps with a little bmw badge very simple design but you can see all you can want to see just by looking at it it seems to be like a, a well beat built car just by the look at it but i like the dimensions i like that it's two door overall it's a very well designed car for the 60s we'll have a look at some of this information but as you'll notice as we go through the brochure it's really wordy so we won't be reading all of it but some we'll kind of just pick some key points out so space on our roads is becoming scarce the road system is not keeping pace with new car production 
the demands made nowadays on the reaction and control capabilities of the driver are frequently raised by sheer density of traffic flow to the limit of what can be regarded as practicable. The pleasure of driving a car is slowly giving way to discontent and continued irritation. Kind of like Strain seeing this in a very early 70s brochure. This seems more like a modern problem. And I'm sure most of them would say, I wish we could go back to the roads in the 70s. But there we go, highlighting how it changed from the 60s to the 70s, really. This is where engineering practice must step in. New cars, both large and small, must incorporate new features to cope with the changing situation on our roads. Depending on the purpose for which it is intended, a car may easily disperse with the second pair of doors, a certain amount of sheer bulk, and some chromium plate. Strange sort of wording on this, isn't it? You know, the, highlighting that for some reason two doors is, is now going to solve uh, the congestion problem. So a little bit of a strange way of looking at it, but I guess it's sort of like looking at it as um, when we went to much smaller cars, um, that was trying to help um, this problem as well. So, but like I say, it's very strangely worded, and I particularly like where it says some chromium plate is removed. <laughs> Harking back to the days where everything was chrome, although this car still has got its fair share of big heavy bumpers on there. As we turn the page, we've got more images. This one going through some kind of dusty track it tells a little bit about the Nürburgring actually on this so we will have a look at that again another look at the tail lights we'll zoom in this picture as well and we'll see how it's badged okay so on this next page like i say we've got this lovely shot of the rear of this bmw you can just out make out that the badging is simply 1600 offset with this strange bmw badge that seems to be in the wrong place sort of but anyway you can see let's see um, how simple the car is but great glass area it must be a very good car there to um, um, good visibility is what I'm trying to say and it's just start talking about the Nuremberg like I say it's as a chassis design rigorously tested in many tough touring car competition events it was a BMW 2 which lapped the Nuremberg ring with its 176 corners in under 10 minutes the first saloon car in the world to achieve this feat exactly the same time 9 minutes 58.5 seconds to be precise was set up only a few years ago by Jean Manuel Fangio in his legendary Formula One racing car on his way to win the German Grand Prix, an example of the high performance achieved by modern cars. So basically, just trying to say, you know, modern cup vehicles are going as quick as racing cars not too long ago. But it continues in this sort of vein as these, you know, cars. You need performance to keep it the car safe. And as we turn the page still further, now into the centre pages, it gives some quite detailed little images, which you tend to get more in the 70s. So there's some like mechanical little bits and shots in 70s brochures, where today you wouldn't find that because who cares anymore? A uh, nice little shot of this sort of like crash testing as well. So we'll have a look at some of these images. Okay, so we'll just briefly look at some of these I images. Here it's showing um, the chassis. It's talking about road holding, etc. Uh, we've got here what it's titled combustion chamber. Um, the BMW power unit draws deeply on modern physics and engineering developing for its high output. One example, the a hemispherical swirly action combustion chamber. Even gives you a little bit of shot of this formula engine. It says Ex exceptional power output with BMW does not mean an overtuned engine, but it is achieved by engineering skills alone. It goes on to say um, it's quite easy to uh, uh, take a standard 85 horsepower engine from the BMW 1600 and convert that into a 220 horsepower racing engine. 
So there you go, there's a weekend project for you. This little image of the overhead camshaft. This, like we've mentioned, this crash test. And here it is in the painting booth. And with all these brochures, we paint our vehicles far better than anyone else so they don't rust. The old rust did it was the 70s. And we'll keep going. Um, a lovely image of this very very simple it kind of like matches the car simple looking on the outside very simple but somehow quite elegant the simplicity of the dashboard on these um, again harks to this age of bmw's built being more a well-built vehicle simplistic vehicle with today it's like completely the opposite way uh, but like i said we'll have a look at some of this text but um I wanted to say that isn't that just a very simplistic but very functional dashboard? So here he's talking about the instrument panel. Let's see if I just make sure my brush doesn't fly away. The instrument panel is placed high up, close to the driver's line of vision, and the clearly marked circular instruments are shielded to prevent reflections. All controls lie conveniently to hand for maximum protection. The control knobs are recessed and the panel padded top and bottom. Two examples will illustrate the excellent control layout. The BMW 1600 has fingertip switches for headlight dipping and flashing, combined with the turn indicators. The screen wipers and automatic screen wash switch can also be operated without removing the hands from the steering wheel. We'll turn the page still further. We get more shots of this very simple functional dashboard. These very simple seats. There's nothing really you'd say, wow, this is a luxury car. Um, but look at the angle of these, these gauges as well. Very interesting. And it's interesting to compare these to uh, what they were building in Britain at the time. Uh, you wouldn't like uh, and france even because i mean if you saw a french car you'd think oh i love to sit in that french car it looks so comfortable these they look pretty hard i'm sure it's very well wearing seats but they look pretty hard seats at the same time i'm just picking this little bit out from this very lengthy text but this is certainly very strange it says bmw 1600 is equipped with an unusual powerful heating and ventilation system with fine control and a blower for additional airflow if required. We now get an image of that, what looks quite an uncomfortable seat, and it says, the BMW 1600 is one of the rare cars in which you feel at home after the first few miles, so much so that you might have been driving it all your life. It goes on to say you will find care and attention for details, enthusiasm for accuracy and perfection, typical for BMW, at our service stations bearing the blue and white emblem. As we turn the page on, yeah, it's, it's pretty worn this brochure, isn't it? But like I say, these oversized large brochures always seem to suffer. We then get to the back page specifications, which we'll have a look at now. Okay, so some of the specifications there. As usual, I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, but basically, it's a four-cylinder, four-stroke, inline um, overhead camshaft engine. Capacity, 1573cc, doing 85 brake horsepower. And some more of that details there if you want. Of course, it's a four-speed synchro mesh on all forward gears. And of course, you can pause this if you do want to read all of it. It goes on to talk about the heating and ventilation, fuel tank capacity, dimensions. Top speed on this car is a 100 miles per hour. It goes on to do not to 62.5 miles per hour in 13.3 seconds. And it looks like it's doing an average mile per gallon of 23.8 US miles per gallon, which isn't unusual. Oh, there we go. 28.5 miles per gallon, sort of UK Imperial. 
it's a bit of a strange one it kind of like shows the kilometers per hour the miles per gallon imperial and the us miles per gallon trying to hit every specification which is unusual this one is actually printed in western germany of course there's no longer uh known western germany um but it is a uk brochure and at the bottom there is a typical bmw badge as i just try and get it back in focus there we go but there we go there's a typical bmw badge the caption here is for pure driving pleasure bmw what is it today um what is it today um the ultimate driving machine is that bmw i think so i wonder when that changed to that caption instead Thank you so much for watching today's episode of the BMW 1600 or 2 series. Please do comment if you've got any experiences of this car. Always love reading personal experiences of cars after this, these brochure reviews. And I think people's personal experiences mean far more than reading some journalist's comment that they probably owned it for, or probably test drove it for maybe a couple of hours. Thank you for watching today's episode and thank you so much for all the people that have subscribed already. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. But for now, we'll say take care and goodbye.